And he says, yeah, don't you remember what David did? And he was not. Amen. So it's time now for the Bible. this man, it must have been what was in his heart. The reason that he was a Bible study put to death with one of our associate brothers. Amen. This was a ministry. presumptuous sin. Amen. He was defiantly doing it. From her Bible he was study, box six nine one, Walterboro, South Carolina, the word of zip the Lord. code two nine four eight eight USA. Let's go now into the tabernacle and of the Bible study with one of our associate brothers. After that May is, God bless you, brother. To make Maranatha. these visual signs, fringes in their garments, ribbon of blue, these visual things to remind you of the Lord. Why? Because he says, he goes down and he says, um, in verse 39, And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it, and remember all the commandments of the Lord, and do them. And that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes. After which he used to go a whoring. Have hidden within your heart God's word that you sin not against him. Psalms one nineteen verse eleven. Psalms one nineteen verse eleven. For if we sin willfully, we have no more sacrifice for sins. After that, we have come into the knowledge of the truth as pertaining to sinning willfully. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Again, after that, we have knowledge of something in particular. And what we're speaking about is sin. It would be the sin unto death. If we sin willfully, then there's no more forgiveness for that sin. That is the sin unto eternal death or eternal separation from Almighty God. Amen. That's Hebrews chapter 10. You can read from about verse 19 to verse 31 of Hebrews chapter 10 with the book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 11. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, forget not what has been said by the Spirit of God as of late. Don't forget it. It's needful that you keep it in memory. The man of God from this morning read from Jeremiah chapter 14. Jeremiah chapter 14. And Jeremiah was told by God not to pray for this people, not to lift up cry nor prayer for them, nor to make intercession for them. Amen. And the man of God was about describing unto us what the Lord had put upon his heart concerning that. And this was the people of God that were being talked about in Jeremiah chapter 14. No intercession to be made for them. At least someone to be an intercessor to make up the difference for someone that was lacking the seeking of Almighty God like they should have been doing. They were lacking in keeping his law, keeping his word, and walking in the way in which he had instructed them. They needed an intercessor, but God said don't even make intercession for them. And the man of God also said that if he had ceased to read at that point in the book of Jeremiah chapter 14, there was no hope. There was no hope. Again, as the spirit of truth would lead and guide into all truth because that's what comforts. Jesus said, when I go, I will send unto you another comforter. The comforter, when he has come, the spirit of truth, he will lead and guide you into all truth. He will lead you into all truth. That's what will comfort a wearied soul is the truth of God in the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Amen. Not turning that truth, not turning Jesus Christ, not making God a liar, not turning the truth into a lie, not turning God who is 
the manifestation of perfect truth into a lie, trying to say that he is not God in doing so. But holding forth the word of life, holding forth the truth, showing the truth, letting it be made manifest as we speak, as we walk, as we live and move and have our being in Christ. Bless the Lord. Again, brothers and sisters, remember the importance of Jeremiah chapter 15 with 14 because Jeremiah was told by Almighty God as Jeremiah wondered what would take place. God said, cast the people out of my sight and let them go forth. Give them what they want. Give them over unto a reprobate mind. Let them do that which is unseemly. Turn them over unto Satan for the destruction of their flesh. Let them go forth. And it shall come to pass if they say unto you, Jeremiah, whither shall we go forth? God said, as Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this people. And it's important that you see this, saints, this contrast, this contrast of events right here. God made a distinction between two different things right here. Amen. Though Moses and Samuel stood before God, as Brother Jonathan mentioned over the past Sabbath, that none of Samuel's words fell to the ground. God did not permit one of them to fall to the ground. And he admonished Samuel not to pray anymore for Saul, for God had rejected him from becoming king. And God took his mercy away from Saul. Don't forget God's mercy, saints. He can take it away. Even though the Lord saved his people after, out of the land of Egypt, he afterward destroyed them that believed not. Remember those two pivotal elements in the Bible study tonight, saints. The mercy of the Lord and believing. They are very pivotal in the Bible study tonight. And also, remembering again what the Spirit of God spake through Brother Friedrich Vince. As Brother Steph played this several times, let there be no division among you, brethren. I believe that was from the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God is faithful. We always want to have the ears to hear what God will say by his Spirit. And none of us will ever go wrong. Even though you will be tried, because if you are to be made up as gold, you must have fiery trials put to you. So the fiery trials come so that God can prove to all creation that you truly belong unto Christ. You are his and not your own. We're not our own. And so God said, let them go forth. And if they say unto you, whither shall we go forth, Jeremiah? Tell them, thus saith the Lord, such as for death to death, such as are for the famine to the famine. Such as are for captivity, we know that God has a captivity. We know that God has given Satan permission to take captive prisoners also. Isaiah testified of that. And according to Isaiah 14 and another place in the book of Isaiah, Satan does not want to let go of any of his prisoners. Therefore, it takes Jesus to set a captive free that he has ordained to eternal salvation. Don't forget the Gadarean that was set free and those devils, according to what we have come to find out, they did not enter back into that man. Better is the end of a matter than the beginning. The last state you read about that man is that he was set free indeed. Better is the end of a matter than the beginning thereof. Not one of those devils entered back into that man. Because the Holy Ghost saw fit to end that account concerning him in Matthew chapter 8, around verse 28. Mark chapter 1, beginning at verse 5, and Luke chapter 8, beginning at verse 29, is the account. And the end of that man was peace. He was at the feet of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, and sought to follow the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so God said, such as for death to death, famine for famine, captivity for captivity, and such as for the sword to the sword. And I will appoint over them four kinds. The sword to slay, the dogs to tear, the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the earth to devour and to destroy. Amen. And furthermore, in chapter 15 of Jeremiah, God said, Verily it shall be well with thy remnant. And that's where Brother Steph found hope. And that's where he found hope. 
Verily, I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well in the time of evil and in the time of affliction. A few verses down in the book of Jeremiah chapter 15. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It shall be well with the remnant, the remnant of Israel, the remnant of the people that are called by the name of the Lord and walk in obedience through grace with the sufficiency of grace and the faith of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank the Lord. Saints, remember again the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord, the Lord of glory, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of heaven and earth, the Lord of peace, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build. The Lord builds upon truth. That foundation, which is Jesus Christ, is a manifestation of truth. He said concerning that truth unto Peter, upon this rock, upon this truth, in this revelation, that I am the Christ, will I build my church. And Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. Amen. His identification is with truth. He cannot lie. So everything that he's spoken concerning things in the past, present, and future, being the now God that he is, it stands forever. It's upheld. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, don't forget it. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding breast and a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of faith, and though I have the gift of prophecy, and though I have knowledge, and though I have all faith, though I understand all things and have not charity, I am nothing. Vanity. Less than vanity. And nothing. The prophet Isaiah did say. Even less, less, less than vanity. And nothing. Just like the nations who are a drop in the bucket to Almighty God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's as if we would be judged without mercy if we have not charity. Once God makes a final tally to judge us for our deeds. If we have not remembered to show mercy. If we have not walked as God has made manifest unto us the way wherein we should walk. If we continue to kick against those pricks and never walk in the way in which God has chosen for us to walk in. To follow in the steps of Jesus Christ. Then once he brings us forth to judgment and there is no turning to do right, no reconstruction of the heart, no transformation of the mind that might have been done. And then when God judges us, he will judge us without mercy. Because brass, sounding brass, is God's judgments being uttered and carried out and executed sounding brass like instruments instruments are in various forms you got instruments for tools building faith hope and charity they are things that will stand the trial of any fire 
they are durable. They are not wood, hair, and stubble. They are, they are the things that will stand in the face of any fire. Remember Isaiah 33. Who shall dwell with these everlasting burnings? Who shall stand before this devouring fire? If it's not built on faith, hope, and charity, saints, it's going to be consumed. It's going to be devoured. It's going to be destroyed. Strengthening those things that remain that are ready to die. Amen. For I have not found that works perfect before God, the Lord did say in the book of Revelations. So this is important, brothers and sisters. Amen. Brass is a type of judgment. Sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. Anything to allure from the way in which God has set for us to walk. Anything to turn us out of the path of righteousness for the Lord's name's sake. It's symbolic of deception. It's symbolic of evil. It's symbolic of iniquity. Wickedness, things that are not profitable. Tinkling symbols, symbolic of that which is not good. Bless the Lord. Let us not say, let us do evil that good may come. Then would, I, would our damnation be just before Almighty God. And his lips would not transgress when he makes such a judgment as that. But he will have his remnant. He will spare and save a remnant. Not spare them from being tried. Not spare them from suffering for Christ's sake. But he will spare them from being utterly lost and separated from him for eternity. A remnant. Bless the Lord. And so, brothers and sisters, the Lord hath prepared for him the instruments of death. Again, the book of Psalms chapter 7. He's prepared them for himself. Again, you got an instrument for building. Amen. You got an instrument of warfare for fighting. And also you have musical instruments or something that will help you to accomplish a particular purpose that's instrumental in helping you to accomplish that particular purpose. And I pray that's the purpose of God because the purposes of the Lord, they're going to stand. But that, that is not purposed by him it's going to come to naught if it hasn't already. Bless the Lord. Now this work, if it be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, nothing can prevail in fighting against it. Amen. There might be a good fight, but the faith that God will have put within his remnant will eventually prevail in the fight and those people to whom God has put his word in their heart and his faith, they will eventually have the high hand at the end of that battle. Amen. They'll have the victory. They will triumph. And they'll be able to give God thanks, which is a pivotal part of worship, as it says in the book of Revelation chapter 7, being thankful. We were admonished as of yesterday to be thankful. Amen. To show forth fruitfulness at all seasons, to be thankful for everything. And it just came to my heart concerning being seated, saints, as you saints are here seated in this tabernacle tonight. He's called us to be seated in heavenly places with him. You never lose that place. You continue to abide in him, you never lose that place. He sitteth between the cherubim, the book of Psalms 99. Amen. The Lord reigneth. The Lord reigneth. He sitteth between the cherubim. He's clothed with strength, honor, and majesty. Amen. Just like the living creatures in the book of Ezekiel. He has a throne, and underneath that throne are living creatures and a firmament whereupon he sits. It's the throne of his glory. In Ezekiel chapter 1, chapter 10, chapter 11, the book of Revelation chapter 4. Bless the Lord. Thanks be unto God for the place where he sits. It's in the third heaven. The place where it counts. He sitteth king forever. As it says in the book of Psalm 29. 
The Lord sitteth upon the flood, yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. And again, the book of Psalms chapter 7, brothers and sisters. So the Lord has prepared for him the instruments of death. Remember that. He makes a distinction. He made a distinction from Jeremiah chapter 14 and 15 concerning those that he had utterly rejected as opposed to those that he had received, that is, his remnant. A glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. That's what Ezekiel said in the book of Ezekiel chapter 11. A glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. That's the place for God's remnant. The ones that he will not utterly destroy. Amen. Thanks be unto God for that, brothers and sisters. So again, it's upon my heart concerning what Brother Joel from Jamaica made mention unto Brother Starr in writing. He said that there was a little disobedience in him, and God was correcting him for it, and God wanted him to say something. And through him receiving the correction, he went ahead and spoke what God had put upon his heart. I remember that very well. And uh, we'll touch somewhat on that tonight because it's very important for the Bible study too. And he made mention about giving all for Christ, giving all for the cause of Christ, giving all to the work of the Lord, being fully committed in that which God is doing. Remember, the night cometh when no man shall work, but God is not a man that he should lie. You don't have to worry about him being a mere man to lie. Yeah, that was God manifested in Jesus Christ. That wasn't the spirit of man just in man. That was the spirit of God working in Jesus Christ. A big difference, a great difference. Just like the same spirit is in you. Same spirit is leading you to do the will of God. The same spirit. He requires obedience of us. The Father does just like he required of his son, Jesus Christ. Yeshua. And rightfully so. So again, remember, brothers and sisters, the instruments of death are prepared by God that he might show unto all his creation, the principalities and the powers of darkness, as well as all of his creation, the angels in heaven, that desire to look into many things that take place with the saints. They desire to look into many, many a thing. And remember, God is going to show his remnant, those to whom he has put his word in their heart, that they do not sin against him. These are they that will not Throw the word of God out of their heart that Satan may come by and catch it in the first watch, in the first tr trial, after that the word of God is ministered or preached or taught or sent unto God's people. Satan will come immediately. That is not so. That's not true. Don't believe it. Mars Hill. Not true. Don't hearken to that. You might have heard some of these words, such as what I just mentioned in times past. And I also admonish you, brothers and sisters, if it's based upon the word of God and the spirit of truth is prevalent, is prevalent. There's the spirit of truth and the spirit of error, one or the other. And also it's backed up by the word of God. Then you are would at that very moment be tried by God himself to see whether you would keep his word or not. Let alone who he used to speak words unto you or to ask you questions. God is trying you. That's the mistake that many of us have made in times past thinking they were just mere people. No, it was God ultimately trying us. He is the one that we're going to have to stand before in judgment and give an account of the things done in our body, whether they were good or whether they were evil. He's the one. He is the one. Even though you don't see him, but if you have the eyes of understanding, you should be able to, to see that God is trying you at that moment. Hold fast to the form of sound words. The words that have the faith of Christ in them. The words that have the spirit of Christ in minister and that minister and the counsel of God with it as brother Jonathan also made mention of this past week. Amen. 
having those elements with him. We know that the man of God is bringing forth the whole counsel of God for this time. And we're just fellow helpers to what? To the truth. Fellow helpers to the truth. We heard the ministry of helps within the past seven days. We're fellow helpers to the truth. And the Lord is he that helps us, sends help from his sanctuary, from his holy place. He's the greatest help of all, saints. So remember mercy upon all, saints, because we're going to need God's mercy. Once he performs his work in this night season, it's going to be a strange work, saints, and a strange act. According to Isaiah chapter 28, very strange. Don't forget. Very strange. And concerning, again, people of the Lord, concerning the time that we're in. Again, recently we have heard by the Spirit of God, by whatever way he has chosen, Primarily, he had Brother Stella put on the broadcast again concerning the men of Issachar were men of understanding, had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. And we ought to fall in the steps of Jesus Christ. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. These are some of the things that we ought to do. Amen. These things ought we to have done and not to leave other things that God has charged us with Undone. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so, saints, this is the 14th month. And within these 14 months, the Spirit of God put upon Brother Stair's heart to make mention of preaching concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Preach concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we sought to lay that to heart. To have that thing stirred up by the Holy Ghost to do as the Holy Ghost had bidden the man of God to speak. Letting no one despise us for doing so. And so it's better to obey God, saints, than to obey our own man of the flesh. It's better to obey God. If he lays his fear upon you, he'll help you. If he makes manifest his terror unto you, he can help us with those things. Yes, he can. He knows how to do it. He also is wise. Bless the Lord. And so this is the 14th month, the 14th month from January 2002 to set our face wholly, entirely on seeking the Lord concerning this time. In particular, since January 2002. This is the 14th month. And I recall again as the Lord had put me in a type of spiritual prison which is more real than anything that you can see in this physical world. It's very real. 14 months. And the Lord has shown great mercy. Great mercy. Don't forget the mercy of the Lord, saints. In bringing me out. After 14 months teaching me a stern lesson. And since then, saints, he has not put me back in there. And by his grace, I will never go back there again. Never. I said by his grace. Now, if I said that without acknowledging God, then I would probably fall prey to that prison sentence again tomorrow or tonight. So I'm holding on to his grace to be strong in the grace which is in Christ Jesus and not in myself. Never to go back there again. Amen. And so the Lord has granted opportunity to make mention concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, concerning a portion of the time. Seeing times are not hidden from the Almighty. If God opens your eyes to see what he sees, saints, then you can understand some of the times that have been, that are and that are to come. Amen. Bless the Lord. And so, we want to always be mindful of what the will of the Lord is, that we may do it. We want to always be mindful of that, have his word hidden in our heart, that we may do it. He is our help, and we thank him for that. And so, this is the 14th month, and this is 
perhaps the last day that I will make mention of a few things. I've said that before. But we are upon the 14th month, saints. And the Lord has let me see 14 months to deal a little bit in having an understanding of the times. We may mention unto you several things you heard concerning the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the tribulation. And again, we don't believe that it has begun as of yet. But we don't contend with that. We don't contend with that. It's enough scriptures that have already been mentioned. And we trust that the spirit of God was present, the spirit of truth. And God will judge every single one of us on how we handle the truth, the word of truth. Yes, he will, saints. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. What if we know it and don't walk according to it? Then he will judge us severely. He will chastise us or scourge us severely. But let's walk according to that that God has made manifest unto us, brothers and sisters. Let's do that. Amen. So this is the 14th month. And again, saints, the tribulation hasn't been gone, hasn't been gone according to Scripture. But that doesn't give us place to be lax. It doesn't give us place to say we can do anything or that since God has promised to save us, we can just live anywhere we want? No, no. Then we are in jeopardy of mocking God. We are in, je in jeopardy of scoffing at him. And then he would be on the verge of cutting us off forever. Don't forget these things. Work out your salvation with Fear and trembling. There's no want to them that fear God. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. The fear of the Lord is clean. It's a cleanser. It's a purgative. It's necessary to worship God in the beauty of holiness. And so this is the 14th month, brothers and sisters. The 14th month. To diligently seek God, to search and to find him, and to get an answer to the truth of these things. And the first thing that came was Matthew 24, concerning whether we're in the tribulation or not. Amen. Matthew 24 was the first thing that came to my heart. Matthew 24 and Mark chapter 13 and Luke chapter 21. And concerning Jerusalem being compassed about with armies. That with the two witnesses having not been made manifest yet were the first things that the Lord laid upon my heart. As I was moved to seek him concerning whether we're in the tribulation or not. Because it's very important to know. It is very important to know. And if that time has begun or the door of grace has already closed, then those that are in the ark cannot be lost. Now we can say, if the door of grace has already been closed, now we can do whatsoever the will of the Lord is and we won't be lost. We can say that now. But if not, saints, then we got to continue to seek God and to pray, to watch and pray. Continually. To be circumspect, to be vigilant, to be watchful, to have ears to hear what God would say by his spirit. Continue. The warnings will yet come forth. If we're already behind the closing of the door or within the ark, then no more warnings are needed for those that are in the house then. No more warnings are needed. Because if that door is closed, I will not give heed to any more warnings whether I'll be lost or not. Was Noah and his sons lost when they were in the ark? Not a one of them. Nor the wives. But that door hasn't closed yet. So the warnings yet come. By the will of God. That's just simple, saints. And again, concerning whether that time is within the last 45 days, when the door closes... There are some other events that must take place. And that's where, what Brother Joel talks about come into place. 
He said the Lord will rebuke the devourer again for the obedient ones. They will have the, the, the devourer rebuked from performing whatever he wanted to perform on them. That is to cause them to lose their soul. For the obedient ones. Now the disobedient ones, they will not have the devourer rebuked from doing whatsoever he pleases to them. So the word of God came very timely. Thank God for putting it upon his heart to, to speak those words, Brother Joel, as he sent the word to Brother Stair. Very important, brothers and sisters. And again, this may be the last time I say that in particular, and I'll give you a reason why. I said this before, but I'll give you a vivid, plain reason why. Because at the onset, as the Lord was teaching us all concerning his glorious strength in forgiving sins, using Brother Stair to show us the glory of God in forgiving sins, amen. As the man of God was being strengthened again, in being quickened in the fear of the Lord concerning the moving of the Holy Ghost and the Word of God coming forth to set in order and to strengthen the house of God as he was beginning to be strengthened, beginning to be. So, Lord, one thing I know for sure, the man of God will let us know whether we're in the tribulation or not. This we know from way back, from something that the Lord dealt with our heart about way back, many years ago. Amen. And so the man of God was not very strong in knowing whether we were in it or not at a particular time. He was not very strong in it. So I said, Lord, you want us not to be spectators concerning this work of God in this end time. You want us to be participators. Are we on the Lord's side or not? Are we, are, are we just on the sideline saying, we wish we were in the game. We wish we were part of what's taking place, this act of God, this strange act, this work of God, this strange work. No, we are part of it. We are participants. We are in it. God has put us in it. He's chosen us to be in it. And he's chosen us in a furnace of affliction to try our faith. He wants to find our faith like unto gold that does not perish. So then I said, once the man of God is strengthened in believing that we are, are not in the tribulation. Once he's strengthened in that, I need not to speak again concerning that. And I believe right now that God, by the right hand of his righteousness, his right hand and his holy arm that has already gotten him the victory, that Brother Stair has been strengthened in that. I believe he's been strengthened in it. And I don't need to speak about it anymore. I don't need to, saints. 14 months now. Amen. 14 months, seven and seven months, the Lord has put that on my heart to seek concerning that for 14 months. And now the man of God is strengthening. There is an assurance in his voice. He said if that door had closed or the tribulation had begun, when the door of grace closes, when he had apparently told us about what he had gone through, then he would not have been saved. But because he is saved, and we have seen the fruits of God manifested in him, that time hasn't begun yet. And the man of God is strong in believing the truth. Not a fable, the truth. So I don't have to say anything more about that. That is settled. And my heart has comfort in it because of the truth. Because of the truth with it. There's nothing against the truth, saints. And I would advise you and encourage you to have a love for the truth. You will only receive the truth. If your heart is right towards it and pure towards hearing truth and not mixing it with anything that will defile it or taint it, you will only receive truth in your heart. Everything else will be blocked. Everything. If you have a love for the truth and you have your soul committed unto God, saying, Lord, I just want to walk in truth. I know you have no greater joy than to hear that your children walk in truth, just like your servant John. You will only hear truth. I don't care how you feel. You will only receive into your heart the truth. Only. Only. Because if not, saints, you won't believe that God told the truth when he said that 
I'm able to save you to the uttermost if you continue to come unto me by Christ Jesus. That would be a lie. If you have something uncertain, not sure, not fixed in your heart, then you will be like a double-minded person. You'll be tossed like the waves of the sea, double-hearted. But God wants you to be stable. He wants you, your heart to be fixed upon receiving the word of God, the truth. It's quite something about the truth, saints. It'll cause your heart to rejoice. It's just something about it. You will not try to please yourself, nor to please man, nor anyone but God. And your neighbors in the household of faith unto edification. To build them up, faith, hope, and charity. That's what God builds with. That's what he builds with through us. To raise this church up, to raise this house up, to raise up this building. From any decay or ruin. Amen. Blessed be thy holy name. And that's nothing to boast in, saints, because quite often pride will come with even telling the truth. And God will have to cut one down real quick. But to have truth in meekness and not having the soul lifted up in pride, it's a valuable thing. It's a valuable thing. Because God will quite often bring you through situations if your heart is towards him and is pure then he won't let you be taken away and cut off, even handling the word of truth. Now, some can be cut off. Handling the word, that's because the heart is not right. That's to use it for some kind of gain or whatever, ungodly gain. There's a godly gain and an ungodly gain. If you bring forth a talent to multiply, to double what you had before, that's a godly gain. But if gain, saints, to please self, to satisfy self, man, that's an ungodly game. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so that's why, saints, I will close on saying that we're not in the tribulation for now because the man of God is strengthening that. And it's the truth. It's not to please me. It's not to say that, look at me, I got the victory. No, it's not anything like that. It's the truth that is in Christ Jesus because it's so important for us to know that. And that's why you will have the more warnings coming forth concerning make sure your heart is right before God, before that door closes. Because it's going to close when the tribulation begins, and you've got three and a half years. Now, some may say the 45 days, but remember there's 18 months in the book of Revelation that is talked about. And I'm going to tell you something in here, saints, that you will not believe if your heart is not right. You won't believe. You won't believe. And remember, mercy is upon us all. Would anyone that's listening to the broadcast tonight raise your hand and say that you don't need the mercy of God? Anyone? Anyone? Just raise your hand and think that you're going to be saved. So God is going to have mercy upon all of us. If there's some weakness, some death, some sickness, because not the center of the body of Christ, it's because all the members are not brought back yet. Yeah, they're wandering in unbelief now. If they were all here, then we'll be strong then. If they were all here, then there will be no sickness, no death, and no weakness. Again, where one might die physically, okay, but he'll die in the Lord, so he won't die then. Outside of the Lord. He won't be separated from God. Would death separate from love of God, which is in Christ Jesus? Romans chapter 8 says no. I'm persuaded of that. Fully persuaded. If you can sin willfully, saints, you can take that route. You can also follow God fully, like Joshua and Caleb. They followed God willfully. They did not sin willfully, but they followed God fully with their will. They had another spirit about it. You can do the one, you can do the other, by the grace of God. Amen. Yes, we need his help, Brother Paul. We need his help. And so again, brothers and sisters, he's going to have mercy upon us all. Don't forget the book of Ezra chapter 3, verses 8 through 13. His mercy is toward the house of Israel forever. And Israel is made up of a rim. He's going to have mercy upon us all. When we all bow down to pray at 7 o'clock, saints, know that every single one of us needs God's mercy. Every one. Now, 
It would be quite something to see somebody that would be saved without the mercy of God. It's not found in the scriptures that that can be so. But that he might have mercy upon all. So those that are yet to be brought back, just a few, they must yet be added. Until then, you're going to have some weakness, sickness, and death. There's no escaping. There's no escape. But God has a time schedule. They without us cannot be made perfect. Because if they were all outside, then they will have committed the sin unto death. If there's no returning, then they're already cut off. Then you would not even be led to pray for them by the Spirit of God. You won't be. But if the Spirit of God leads you to pray for them, and they're not in the place where God wants them to be in this end time, then you know that the door of grace ain't closed yet. So just a few things just in mentioning, saints, as we go in the Bible study. And concerning, again, the instruments of death, God has prepared for them. Again, remember Lucifer in Ezekiel 28. He was a musical instrument, a musical created instrument by Almighty God. And God will still use him as an instrument in this end time to play a funeral song for Jerusalem. That's what lamentations mean. Funeral song. God got to withdraw his spirit from that place. Well, the spirit of God is not, there is death. And the Antichrist is going to be used instrumentally in the hand of God to bring Jerusalem down. More so than what it is now. So he's very instrumental. And don't forget the book of Daniel chapter 8, 7, 8, 11, and 12. He is yet to be made manifest, saints. There is a horn now, a notable horn, a warring king or ruler now upon the face of the earth. The whole world knows that. The whole world. But there is yet another to come up after him. There is yet another. It's not the same one to be transformed later on into the Antichrist. No. It said, and another king shall rise up, whose looks shall be more stout than his fellow." A fierce countenance is that another king, not the same king who is transformed into another beastly type individual, but another king, making it plain upon fleshly tables of your heart to you, saints. Speaking the word plain to you. Amen. Remember the Valley of Vision. In the book of Isaiah chapter 22, that's what Gehazi means. The name Gehazi, remember Gehazi, Elisha's servant? His name means valley of vision. That's what it means. Without a vision, the people shall perish. And again, Habakkuk said that he was told by God to write the vision and to make it plain upon tables. And I pray that it be made plain upon your fleshly tables of the heart. That they're not hearts of stone, but fleshly tables of the heart that you can understand. He said, write it and make it plain. I'm going to make this plain, brothers and sisters. Now, again, remember to believe is so important because according to the book of Acts chapter 13 and the book of Habakkuk chapter 1, Acts chapter 13 and the book of Habakkuk chapter 1, God has instruments. And remember again, he said he will raise up a foolish shepherd. Amen. He will be an instrument, take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. The book of Zechariah chapter 11 talked about. And that is the manifestation of the little horn or the Antichrist. And the whole world virtually is going to bow down before him, saints. And his eyes are a key. The spirit that's upon him is the key. Remember, the eyes are like the spirits. Seven eyes, seven spirits. His eyes are a key. You can look at the eyes of the present ruler, the warring king today. You can look at his eyes and see whether he's the embodiment of evil, a type of evil. But you can see whether he is the embodiment of evil like the spirit of Satan himself. You can tell by the eyes. You can tell by the eyes. No doubt about it. Is representative of spirit saints. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Be it known unto you therefore. 
Men and brethren, verse 38, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. And Brother Burgess again preached the message on beware. I always remember that. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you which was spoken of in the prophets. Remember the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1 and verse 5. Behold, ye despisers, you call to be Jacob's saints. You Jacob's, stand up. Jacob's, or are you Esau's? Esau, sit down. Jacob, stand up. Jacob's, stand up, brother. Brother Philip Mises. Jacob, stand up. You standing for God, brother, not for a preacher, brother. You standing for God that sends preachers. Amen. You may sit down. So you have an understanding of what we're talking about here. Trying very careful not to be individualistic or divided, like the Spirit of God spoke through Brother Friedrich Vince. Not to be schismatic, separatists. We all are separated unto God for a holy use. Behold ye despisers, and wonder, and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declared unto you. We know the account through Brother Stair. Many don't believe that. We understand that spiritual application here too. And it's, it's viable, very viable. Amen. It's very important to know that. Remember, the scriptures are at least dual in their manifestation and interpretation. At least dual. At least dual. They could be sevenfold, eightfold, but at least dual. Amen. So we understand that. And so I have an overcomer paper right here that has been on my heart lately. It talks about May, June of 2000. And we're in the season of May, June 2003. Amen. And it talked about Habakkuk chapter 1. And her, Brother Joel talked about the book of Malachi also. And the book of Peter concerning the 12 tribes of Israel. We're all like the tribes of Israel. We that have been born again and been baptized. We thank God for that. And brothers and sisters, I pray that this be plain upon your heart. Because that's what God told Habakkuk in chapter 2 of that particular book. To write it and make it plain. So I'm going to make this plain to you. Not to add anything to it. Nor to take anything away from it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The book of Habakkuk, it goes with the book of Joel, chapter 1, brothers and sisters. The book of Habakkuk. You heard Brother Steph make mention of this quite often. I remember what Brother Peter Scott made mention of. To concentrate on Christ. Determine to know nothing among you, say Jesus Christ, him crucified. We understand that application by Brother Peter Scott also. The Lord bless all the brothers in the Bible study. Brother Carl Yost, Brother Christopher. Amen. Brother Charles, Brother Paul, amen. Lord bless all the brothers and all the ministers of God. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. O Lord, how long shall I cry and thou wilt not hear? Even cry unto thee of violence and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? If God shows a watchman in the things, saints, then he will see exactly what God sees. For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slacked, the law of Christ, for us today, since the veil has been taken away. We understand the Old Testament through Christ now. The veil has been taken away, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous, therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. Behold, ye among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously. These are the unbelievers now. It talked about believing in the book of Acts chapter 13. Don't forget that. That through him you're justified from all things. Through Christ, Yahshua. For I will work a work in your days which ye will not believe though it be told you. This is the work. This is the other part of at least dual revelation of the... Book of Acts, chapter 13, beginning around verse 37, verse 38. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans. This is God's instrument right here. This is his work, his strange work, and this is his act. 
his strange act. If we don't know the God of judgment, the Lord of Sebaoth, then we are in jeopardy, saints, of cursing God and dying an eternal death by charging him with folly. This is God's work. And this is that fourth beast. Amen. Not just the Chaldeans right here. This is the manifestation of that fourth beast. Dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. Amen. Amen, saints. This is the one that will have the mastery after the four. Amen. The four horns take place after the one first, the first king that is talked about in the book of Daniel chapter 8 is broken. With the economy, with them, as Brother Stair said, uh, is also with that. It talked about this king will be broken as well as the second king, the Antichrist, will be broken without hand. Remember to read the end of Daniel chapter 8. The second king, the Antichrist, will be broken without hand as well as the first king. That is the, the horn that's warring right now. He will stumble and fall and not be found, Daniel chapter 11. It's going to happen just as sure as God is on his throne in the heaven of heavens. And there's nothing that's going to turn it away. That cannot be countervailed. Cannot be countervailed. Cannot be altered. That's the truth, saints. It's going to stand in cement. It's already fixed. This is the locusts. This is like the locusts that are talked about in Exodus chapter 10. It said that there will not be another lo group of locusts like this, neither shall there be any more. And these locusts are likened unto men, likened unto men, armies. They're also talked about in the book of Revelation chapter 9. It's going to ascend out of the bottomless pit. These spirits are going to have the mastery of men to perform the judgment of God as he carries out indignation upon the earth. Amen, brothers and sisters. The book of Joel Chapter 1. Hear this, ye old men. Give ye all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. That which the palmer worm hath left hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust hath left hath the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm hath left hath the caterpillar eaten. Now for God's people, he will rebuke the devourer, the remnant. But for those that are not the remnant, those that don't believe, they are going to eat up all the increase of all the unbelievers, these worms. Now, Brother Joel talk, told you about God rebuking the devourer for the obedient ones, those that do give all, all the tithe, 10%, all they got, like the woman that gave her two mites. So we want to remember this, saints. The palm of worm, there's going to be a mark in the right hand, the palm, palm of worm. Amen. To begin, that's going to be in this tribulation. And the locusts are going to eat, Revelation chapter 9. That which the palm of worm had left, those that take the mark of the beast, well, the locusts are going to come after them. And the canker worm, the gold and silver will be cankered. And the caterpillar, God said, I will cause the horses to come up as the rough caterpillars in Jeremiah chapter 51, around verse 27 and 19. He's going to fill Babylon with men as with caterpillars to execute his judgment. They're going to burn that mercantile Babylon of the world with fire. Brothers and sisters, remember mercy upon all of us. I am You've been listening to a Bible study coming to you directly from Walterboro, South Carolina, at the Overcomer Ministry with one of our associate brothers. If you'd like to write to the Bible study, you can address your letter to the Bible study, Box 691, Walterboro, South Carolina, in the United States of America. Be with us again tomorrow at the same time for the Bible study. Let's continue now with our programming here on the Overcomer Radio Broadcast.